Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and today we're taking a look at ray diagrams of concave mirrors. This picture here just shows a ray diagram in a concave mirror and some of the rules that we would follow to draw that diagram. So we have a couple learning goals here today. You should be able to draw ray diagrams for concave mirrors, and you should be able to describe images produced by concave mirrors. Now for number two, those follow the rules that we learned in ray diagrams for plane mirrors. If you haven't watched that video yet, please watch that video first. I'll put a link in the description box below. So, there are several different rules for drawing ray diagrams for concave mirrors. Those rules depend on the location of the original object. Now there are several different locations based on the points along the principal axis. So we have several points we can talk about. The first one is when the object is beyond C, which means further from C than the mirror. So this picture here shows an object beyond C. The object could be at C, so right at the point where the center of curvature exists. It could be between C and F, so anywhere between those two points. It could be at F, or it could be between F and the mirror. So those are all locations that we talk about when we draw our ray diagrams. Now depending on those locations, we'll use different rules. For the three locations, object beyond C, object at C, and object between C and F, for those three locations we use the same rules. So I'm only going to draw one diagram that uses those rules, but they will apply to all three of those locations. Now unfortunately, I can't draw these by hand the way that I did with the plane mirrors because it's just far too messy and I, don't, I can't use a ruler with my tablet and get the angles all correct. So I'm going to use an animation to show how you would draw those lines, but it'll be the exact same way as if I was drawing them by hand. So here we have our original object, it's a blue balloon, and we're going to figure out how the image looks from this original object. So our first rule is that if we have an incident ray that's parallel to the principal axis, so remember principal axis is that imaginary line that the, is um, along the midpoint of the mirror. So if our incident ray is parallel to the principal axis, it will reflect through the focus. And if you remember, that was actually one of our rules about the definition of focus. So a parallel, pr parallel to the principal axis will reflect through the focus. Our next rule is actually just the opposite of that. So if a light ray goes through the focus, so the incident ray passes through the focus, it will reflect off the mirror parallel to the principal axis. So those two are just sort of inverses of each other. Um, so it might be easy to remember one rule and then you just flip the rule around and use it for the other rule. So now we, if we take a look, we can see that those two reflected rays actually cross each other. So if we look at the reflected rays, those are the ones that bounce off the mirror. They cross each other about halfway between C and F. Now, we started drawing our lines at the top of the balloon, which means where those lines cross is also going to be the top of the balloon for our image. If we had drawn the lines from halfway through the balloon, then that would be halfway through the balloon of the image. But we always start at the top of our object, so it will be the top of our image where those lines cross. So I can draw the balloon at that location. Now we know that the stem of the balloon was a vertical line from the top of the balloon down to the principal axis, so our stem of the balloon is going to be towards the principal axis as well. Our balloon is upside down now, but we have a line going towards the principal axis because that's where the line went for our original balloon. So we can see that we now have an image that matches our object. So if we take a look at the uh, description of this image, the size is smaller, the attitude is inverted because it's upside down from the original, the location is between C and F, you don't need to say exactly halfway or anything like that, it doesn't need to be specific, just between C and F, and it's a real image because it's on the same side of the mirror as the original object. If you notice, the mirror has those little dash parts which represent the other side of the mirror. It's not over there, it's on the same side of the mirror, so it's considered a real image. 
Um, and these descriptions vary depending on one of those three locations written at the top. They'll be slightly different. So you need to describe it based on the image that you've drawn. These rules here are just exactly what I've explained. If you'd like to pause the video and write them down, you're welcome to do so. Um, if you're happy with just the pictures, then you can just use the pictures. So let's take a look at what happens when the object is at F. So this is a different location than the three that we looked at before. We're going to start off the same way with an incident ray parallel to the principal axis. So parallel to the principal axis will reflect through F, so it's the exact same rule. Now last time our second rule was that the ray went through F. We can't do that this time because the object is directly on F, so we're going to have to use a different rule. That different rule is that if the light ray came as if it was arriving from the center of curvature, it will reflect back along the exact same line. So if we have a light ray coming from the center of curvature and that hits the top of our balloon there and it hits the mirror, it will reflect back as if it came from the same original place. And you notice there I had to put arrowheads going both directions on that line to indicate the light went towards the mirror and away from the mirror. All of the other lines just had a single uh, arrowhead showing which direction they were going, but this one needs two on the same line to indicate that the light goes back along the same place. Now, if you notice that red line and orange line don't actually cross, so they both started at the top of the balloon, but if they don't cross, where's the top of the balloon in the image? Well, it actually doesn't exist. So for our salt, when we're describing it, we would say there's no image. Whenever the object is located at F, there is no image. You will always end up with parallel reflected rays. They will never cross and you will not have an image. And that's always true when the object is at F. And again, here are the rules. If you'd like to pause the video and write them down, you're welcome to do so. Now let's look at the final location when the object is between F and V. Now this one's a little bit more tricky, so make sure you're paying close attention. We'll start off with our first rule, that if the light ray is parallel to the principal axis, it will reflect through F. Again, we've seen this rule before. If it's parallel to the principal axis, it will reflect through F. Our second rule is that if light came from C, again it has to touch the top of the balloon, it will reflect back along the same line. So we saw these two rules in our last example. Now, if you notice, those lines are actually getting further apart from each other. The reflected rays that are going towards the left there, they're actually getting further apart. If they're getting further apart, they're not going to cross to create an image. However, if we extend those lines backwards on the other side of the mirror, they will cross. They'll be getting closer together. So let's extend those lines backwards. We'll extend the orange one and extend the red one backwards, and we'll see that those lines do cross on the opposite side of the mirror. Wherever those lines cross, we know that's going to be the top of the balloon for our image because the lines, our incident rays, started at the top of the balloon of the object. So this represents the top of the balloon, and we know that for the object, the string of the balloon just went straight down to the principal axis. So in this case, again, for our image, the line will go straight down to the principal axis. Now, this time our, object, or sorry, our image is on the opposite side of the mirror. So let's describe this image. It's larger than the original object. It's upright because they're both facing the same direction. It's behind the mirror. And the type is virtual. Because it's on the other side of the mirror, we know that light cannot actually get to that side of the mirror. So we call it a virtual image. And one thing I forgot to mention earlier, if you notice the light rays that I drew on the opposite side of the mirror, I made those dashes rather than a straight line. I did that because light doesn't actually move through the mirror. So this is indicating where light appears to come from, but light isn't actually going through the mirror, so we draw them as dashes. And again, here are the rules. You're welcome to pause the video and write these down if you'd like to. 
So let's take another look at our learning goals. You should be able to draw ray diagrams for concave mirrors, and you should be able to describe images produced by concave mirrors. If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video, and if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. Alright, that's all for now. Bye-bye!